the makers of Camel Cigarettes present Dick Powell as Richard Diamond, Private Detective. Other cigarette has Camel's rich, full flavor, the flavor of Camel's costly tobaccos. And no other cigarette gives you this proof of mildness. In a coast-to-coast test of hundreds of people who smoked only Camel's for 30 days, noted throat specialists reported not one single case of throat irritation due to smoking Camel's. Make a note. Think of your throat. Try Camel's. transcribed is Richard Diamond, Private Detective, starring Dick Powell. Now, in my business, I run into a lot of people, make a few friends, and a lot of enemies. I remember a few weeks ago when one of those friends walked all the way over from 31st Street to tell me about his trouble and leave me a share of it. His name is Angelino Giuseppe, and he runs a butcher shop. Little guy with a big, broad stomach and a smile to match. I met him when I was on the force. He used to stop in and buy some cold cuts or a pound of bacon. I liked his smile, and I always hung around for one of his bad jokes. But when he came into my office that afternoon, pushing his big stomach in front of him, I spotted trouble right away. The smile was gone. Well, well, Angelino. Hello, Mr. Diamond. I haven't seen you in a long time. Come stay. Uh, sto male, sto male. <laughs> yeah, I can tell. Now, oh, what's the trouble? The pig's knuckles got arthritis? Pig's knuckles. <laughs> That's better now. That's more like my answer. Uh, you always are kidding. You, you make it easy to smile. Yeah. That's it. Uh, grazie. Grazie. All right, Angie, let's have it. What's wrong? Well, I'm going to ask you to do something. Am I... I can't pay you. Hmm? Uh, we'll talk about it later. Uh, you, you can take it out in a trade. That'll run into a lot of ham hocks, Angelino. Well, I want to pay you. Hmm. Well, I can always throw a barbecue. Now tell me about it. Well, you see, it's like this. I come to you as a sort of a representative from all the other butcher shops, uh, the, the independent ones. I see. I ain't the only one that's worried, so all the butchers got together last night and decided to do something about it. All of the uh, independent butcher shops? That's right. Hmm? Every week, a couple of guys come around and collect. Now, if we don't pay, we get our shops bust up, and if that ain't enough, we get our heads to bust too. Hmm. Look, see? I still got three stitches right here on the top of my head. Hmm. Oh, I see. That's a nice job. Doctor must have used a loom. <laughs> well, I got this last week when these two guys came for the money. Mm-hmm. I couldn't pay, so one of them hit me with a black jack. Oh, that's too bad. What about the law, Angelino? That'd give you the right kind of protection. Well, we discussed that at the meeting, but we decided it was too dangerous. We've been warned. If we go to the police, we get hurt too bad. Mm-hmm. Well, we all got families, Mr. Diamond. We can't take the chance. Now, have the two men who beat you up been back? No, but they will be. Okay, let's go. Well, we're going someplace? Yep, we are going someplace. You don't know it, Angie, but you just hired yourself a new assistant. I have? You certainly have. Come on, I want you to show me how to carve a locks. Well, that's what happens when your reputation gets around the butcher shops. I'd been telling Angelino what a great detective I was for the past ten years, but I should have known he'd never take my word for it, so I had to prove it. We went out, grabbed a cab, and 15 minutes later, I was standing behind the butcher shop counter. Angelino handed me a white apron. I I, I don't get it. 
Why you want to be a butcher? Angie, you want me to get a line on these guys who do the collecting, don't you? Why, sure. Well, I can only think of two ways. I could watch them and not look suspicious. Make like a butcher, or crawl in with the ground round. <laughs> crawl in. Think of what would happen if someone looked down for the price of ground round and caught it staring back at them. <laughs> Callista, that's so funny. <laughs> oh, now, come on, Angie. It wasn't that funny. Well, a big... Oh, oh, oh. Customer. Oh, nothing like learning firsthand. Let me handle the sale. Well, you think you can? Sure, sure, sure. Here she comes. Oh, uh, good morning, Mrs. Hennessy. Oh, good morning, Mr. Angelino. Well, business must be good. I see you have a new butcher. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, the, this uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Hangtooth. Uh, Mr. Hangtooth. Hangtooth? Good morning, Mrs. Hennessy. Is something I can do for you? Oh, uh, yes. How much is uh, the lamb shoulder today? Which one? What? Uh, look, maybe you better let me... Uh, uh, relax, Angie. I'll make it. Which shoulder would you like, Mrs. Hennessy? Is there a difference, young man? Oh, yes. You see, this lamb here is really a ram. A ram? That's right. Hurt his shoulder playing against the Cardinals last season. We're also selling his shoulder pads at 21 cents a pound. Mr. Angelino... You'll find him hanging in the back with the spare ribs. Now, uh, Mrs. Hennessy, if you can tell me which shoulder you want, I'll wrap it up and send it off tackle between the liver and the... Well, I never... Of course you haven't. That's the trouble with you people. Here's a nice little ram that played his heart out. And... Oh, by the way, the heart is special today, 11 cents a pound. Angie. She's a gone, huh? Like laundry in a tornado. Well, what do you want to do that for, Mr. Diamond? She was one of my best customers. I wanted to get her out of here. I wanted to get her out in a hurry. Just as she came in, I spotted two guys heading this way. When they saw her, they backed off. Look, they're standing across the street right now. Where? Where? Right over there. You see them? In front of the drugstore. Front of the... Aha! Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. That's them. It is? They're the ones that hit me. They're the ones that come around collecting. Uh, well, they're coming again. You better duck. I'll take care of it. Well, listen, please, you be careful. They're pretty rough monkeys. Now go on, Angie, and beat it. They're almost here. All right, all right. I'll be in the back. Okay. A mile, a mile, a mile can a cigarette be? Make the camel 30-day test and you... Well, good morning, gentlemen. What can I do for you? Hey, where's Angelino? Oh, well, he's out buying some old buffalo. I'm the new assistant. Buffalo? Shut up. Well, tell me, new assistant, when will he be back? Well, it's hard to say, gentlemen. These uh, buffalo are in Wyoming. Oh, yeah? Carl, I think this guy's trying to be funny. You, my friend, win yourself a lamb chop. How will you have it, with or without the bloomers? Hey, you know some right? I think you're right. Hey, what's your name, laughing boy? Hangtooth. Hangtooth? Oh, I'm going to have more fun with that. Blows everybody. Well, look, Hangtooth, you know who we are? How many guesses? You won't need even one. We're in a hurry. We're collectors. Oh, well, we put all the scraps out and back in a can. You can't miss it. I don't like you. Well, I have a friend. Maybe we could double date. Look, let's stop the clowning. If Angelino didn't tell you about us, it's going to be too bad for you. We're for some money. We get every week 25 bucks. Yeah, last week Angelino didn't have it, so he accidentally hit his head. We figured that all that blood would make him remember it this week. Well, I'm a sorry friend, but Angie didn't say anything about it. Tell me, what does he pay you boys for? Oh, little things. Protection, mostly. You see, if he paid us last week, he wouldn't have hit his head. Hmm. You know something? I know a big, fat cop who would just love to hear all about this protection Angie's paying you for. You do, huh? Yeah, I do, huh? Well, look. Seeing as how you're a new boy around here, maybe we ought to tell you first. Why don't you do that? Yeah, let's go in the back. I like it here. I listen better. Oh, you do, huh? Is that all you guys can say? Now get out from behind that counter. I want to explain the thing to you. Yeah, go on, Red. Explain it to Mr. Hangtooth. Hangtooth? Uh, you'll have to pardon him. He don't hear so well. How's your hearing, Hangtooth? Depends on what I'm listening to. Well, listen to this real good. Seeing as how you're working for Angelino, you're going to need protection, too. So let's have the 25 bucks. I want to know what I'm buying. Oh, sure. Hey, hit him this time. Hey, a rough one. Yeah, you're bleeding. 
Yeah. Wanna get rough, huh? Hang tooth! Hey, you're liable to kill him. Yeah. I'll let him alone. Hey, we better get out of here. Yeah. We'll come back for Angelino later. <laughs> Well, you really can't blame brave little old me for going to sleep at that point. One, I could have handled. But in that cramped space behind the counter, with both of them coming from different directions, I had to give it up sooner or later. And I did for about 20 minutes. When I finally snapped out of it, I looked up and saw three heads staring down at me. Two herring with Angelino in the middle. Uh, Mr. Diamond, you're right. Oh, lovely. Here, let me help you get up. Swell. Now, uh, look for my eyes, will you, Angie? I didn't know what to do. I guess I should have called the police. Oh, find time to tell me. Mm. Uh, let me sit down. My, when I thought about calling the police, I also thought about my family. Those two men might beat up my family just like this. Yeah, I, uh, I guess you're right. Mr. Diamond, please, you better forget about this. It's uh, too dangerous. When they come back, I'll pay them the money and nobody gets hurt. Look, Angie, I can understand why you're scared. Those two headhunters aren't kidding, but you can't let them get away with it. I can and I will. I ain't taking no more chances. First they bust up my shop, then they bust up me, and now you. No thanks. I got enough. Okay, Angie, but not me. What are you going to do? Well, I got a sore face and a nasty disposition. I won't get back to normal until I find those two guys and tie their necks in a bow. I left Angelino's shop and headed for the 5th Precinct Police Station. I wanted to look up two sure bets for the police gallery. One named Carl and the other Red. Two guys who went around scaring poor little businessmen like Angelino. By the time I reached the station, the aches from the beating were making me very unhappy. And when I walked into the squad room, I spotted something that didn't make things any better. Yeah, what are you... Holy cow, Diamond! Well, Sergeant Otis, I'm glad you noticed. Means I put myself together all right. What happened to you? Uh, don't be silly. I always bleed just before lunch. Well, how did it happen? It wasn't easy. Is the lieutenant in? Sure, go ahead. Well, thanks. Say, uh, Otis, when are you going to start shaving in the morning? Why? What's wrong? Your five o'clock shadow is four hours fast. Oh. Hiya, Walt. Wow. What hit you? Well, the bruises show up. I come on in Technicolor. Someone sure did a good job. Yeah. That someone is two guys, Walt. One named Red and the other Carl. Red and Carl. Yeah. I got closest to Red. Name matches the hair, busted nose, about 190, very nasty with a sap. And Carl? Dark, greasy, well-dressed if you like the type. Big boy with a scar under his uh, right eye. I gave Walt the complete descriptions and briefed him on what had happened in Angelino's shop. We went down to the mug file and started going through pictures. Twenty minutes and eight dozen charming photographs later, I found what I was looking for. I showed them to Walt, and he said, Now, oh, you know him? Yeah, Carl Tate and Red Dillon. Here's the package. Dozen arrests, half a dozen convictions between them. Hmm, very impressive. A couple of muscle men. What do they go after you for? I've been pulling a protection racket on some of the independent butcher shops. Who do they work for? Uh, he used to work for Jack Arno before he got sent up. I know they're not working this setup alone. It's too big. No, they wouldn't be. Hey, Tiny Easter's in town. Tiny Easter? Oh, used to be Arno's right-hand boy. That's right. Came in about a month ago. I'd love to get something on him. Nobody's ever been able to nail him. Well, it adds up. Easter worked for Arno, and so did Carl Tate and Red Dillon. Well, we can't pick him up just because two of his boys worked you over. He'd just say they weren't his boys. I don't want him picked up. I want Carl and Red. If Easter goes along with the deal, you could have him. What are you going to do? Get cleaned up and pay Mr. Tiny Easter a visit. What's his address? He's got an office on East 48th Street, 804. Thanks, Walt. Tiny's a bad boy. I'll take along my 38 just in case I have to spank him. <laughs> 
I left Walt, went back to my office, took a clean shirt out of the closet, and washed up. Locked up again, went down to the street. I grabbed a cab, and 20 minutes later, I was standing in the reception room of Tiny Easter's office. A big guy with a bulge under his arm was trying to be as unreceptive as possible. So you want to see Easter? You have an appointment? No, I haven't got an appointment. Now tell Easter I'm out here. What's your name? Oh, you're going to get hung up on this. What do you mean? The name's Hangtooth. What? I see. Now make like an office boy and tell Easter I got a message for him from Carl and Red. You're a pretty fresh guy, aren't you? Yeah, and I'm going to spoil if I have to stand around much longer. You can spoil rotten for all I care. You're not going to see Easter. He's busy. Okay. You know, you get so excited, you'll ruin your stomach someday. Oh, I don't think so. You don't, huh? <coughs> Skeptic. What do you want? I'm collecting scalps. How'd you get by a lefty? Oh, he's tied up with a stomach ache, swallowed a fist. Okay, so you got muscles. Also, you got a pushed-in face. Lefty do that? Carl Tate and his blood brother, Red. Oh? What you come to me for? They're working for you, aren't they? You smell like a cop. Name's Hangtooth. I doubt it. And good for you. I'd hate to go through that again. I'm a private cop. Well, now, good for you. I was in a butcher shop when your two boys wandered in and started playing squash with me. I don't like to get pushed around, Easter, and I don't like your racket. I want Carl and Red, and if I get you along with them, the state will hang a medal on me. Looks like you got nothing to lose. Don't look at it any way you like. Now, what about your two playmates? I don't know what you're talking about, Shamus. Never heard of those two guys. I don't think you understand, Tiny. I'm pretty mad. I'm going to find these two guys, and I'm going to do it even if I have to be unpleasant with you. Just what do you mean by unpleasant, Mr. Hangtooth? You break a leg, that's unpleasant. Ow! Don't try to pull a gun on me. You busted my hand. Take your foot off. Drop the gun in the drawer. Okay. My hand's busted. Now take the hand out. Empty. Oh. Now, let me explain it again. If you go out and shoot 12 people tomorrow, I'm going to be sore about it. But when you start intimidating a bunch of hard-working little guys and their families, I go off like a skyrocket. And then when a couple of your cheap gunsels push me around, I explode. I tell you, I don't know these guys. No! Look, Easter, please believe me. I don't know them. You worked with them in Chicago. Ah! I'm telling you the truth, Easter. I'll work you over till you look like an eggplant in a subway. Look, whatever your name is, I got boys. They'll take care of you. Who's going to tell them to do it? I am. With your jaw broken? No! Now, where do I find Carl and Red? Oh, you knock all my teeth loose. I got 31 to go. <laughs> I guess you really don't understand. Yes, yes, I understand. Ooh. Now, where are they? <laughs> you still need some encouragement? No, no, in the warehouse by the 14th Street docks. What warehouse? Rogers and Sons. Big sign on the top. You mind if I use your phone? Go ahead. Don't you know it's not polite to listen, Easter? Well, what do you want me to do? Go to sleep. No! Before we continue with Richard Diamond, here are a few words about smoking enjoyment. More people smoke camels than any other cigarette. That's right. More people smoke camels than any other cigarette. Behind camels' great popularity are the two things that mean steady smoking enjoyment. Flavor and mildness. No other cigarette has the rich, full flavor of camels' costly tobaccos. Tobaccos that are properly aged and expertly blended. And no other cigarette gives you this proof of mildness. In a coast-to-coast -coast test of hundreds of people who smoked only camels for 30 days, noted throat specialists reported not one single case of throat irritation due to smoking camels. Make your own camel 30-day test. The sensible test, based not on a puff or a sniff, but on day-in, day-out smoking. You'll see how flavorful camels are and how well camels get along with your throat pack after pack. How mild, how mild, how mild, how mild, how mild can a cigarette be? Make the camel 30-day test and you'll see. Smoke camels and see. 
And now, back to Richard Diamond, Private Detective, starring Dick Powell. I put in a call to Walt and told him what had happened. He said he'd send a couple of men down to pick up Easter and agreed to meet me at the warehouse. It was getting late in the afternoon when my cab pulled up near the river and I got out. The cold breeze was kicking up little patches of white on the water and the light fog was moving in from the Atlantic as I started down toward a big building with a sign on the top that read, Rogers and Sons Importing. The place was boarded up, but a window in the basement showed signs of recent use, so I jimmied it open and dropped down on the dark, cold pavement. I held my breath and listened. The place was as quiet as a tomb. So I moved across the room until I found a flight of stairs and went up to the main floor. I opened the door and listened again. It sure is getting cold in here. Yeah. How long are we going to have to stay here? Till Easter tells us to leave. Now relax. It was Carl and Red, all right. They were somewhere in the warehouse, so I kept on my toes and moved as quietly as possible toward the voices. You want to play some cards or something? Yeah, it's okay with me. I don't know why we got to hide out like this. Because Easter said to, that's why. We got to stay cool till he finds out about that guy we worked over this morning. Hag toot? Yeah. Might have been a cop. So what? We worked cops over before. I'm cold. Look, just steal the cards and... Uh, yeah. What? He did, huh? Hey! Hey, what's the matter? Boss! Hey! What's the matter? I don't know. That was Easter. The guy we worked over was in his office, tied him up. He got loose, but the guy's headed down here. Hack to? Yeah. Just as Easter was gonna say what to do, sound like he got in a fight. The cops. Yeah. I think we better get out of here. Good afternoon, boy. Huh? Hack to? Hang to. Come back here, Carl. Uh, help me. You shouldn't have pulled a gun, Red. Since when do you butchers carry rods? Since we get pushed around by guys like you. Give a doc, I'm shot mad. I can't take it back. The law will be here in a minute. You, you're a lousy butcher. I hope Carl pays you good. I'll see that he gets the chance to try. I left Red lying on his face and ran toward the front of the building. The only way out was that window in the back, and Carl was sure to be hiding somewhere in the dark, hoping to get around me and head for the basement. There were a dozen places to hide in that warehouse, but I had one advantage. He couldn't see me any better than I could see him. I stopped and listened. Come on, Carl. Red's hurt pretty bad and the law's on the way. You gotta get me before you can get out of here. Carl! Come on, Carl, give it up. You're stuck and you know it. Carl! I had his position pretty well spotted. By his gun flashes, I could tell he was edging his way toward another large pile of packing cases. I moved off to my left, still keeping his approximate position in line with my gun barrel. It was my idea to circle him, but something changed my mind. A metal ladder stretched down from the ceiling and led up to a catwalk overhead. I went up, one rung at a time, half turned to keep Carl in line in case he made a break. After what seemed like hours, I reached the catwalk and started crawling on my hands and knees toward Carl's position. I was nearly over him when I heard the door open. Rick! Put hand. Yeah! Here's one of them. He shot up pretty bad. Rick! Come on, Otis. Maybe he's up that way. I couldn't answer him, and he was heading right for Carl. I kept looking down, hoping Carl would show himself. Walt got nearer, and I held my breath. Just then, Carl stepped out and aimed his gun at him. I beat him to it. <laughs> it's okay, Walt. I got him. I'm up here on the... Oh. There, there he is up there. Red. Good grief. Yeah, good grief. 
Get Otis out of here, will you? <laughs> What's so funny, Lieutenant? If you knew Otis, you could rib Diamond for the rest of his life. <laughs> yeah? Walt. <laughs> come on, tell me what it is. Walt? <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Get out of here, Otis. Oh, little cat. You heard him, Otis, now beat it. Yeah, go on, Otis. Oh, gee, little cat, won't you even... No, he won't. Now you beat it. <laughs> it's real funny, isn't it? <laughs> it sure is. <laughs> I just save your life and you stand down there and you... Oh. <laughs> Don't look down. Get the fire department. Don't you ever think about these things before you start climbing ladders? Well, it was the only way I could get the position to shoot. I just didn't think. <laughs> For a guy who can't stand high places. Walt. <laughs> well, it's your own fault. Fault, small. Get me down. I'm getting dizzy. <laughs> it's only about 50 feet to the floor. Walt. Great big boy like you. If you don't get the fire department. Okay. <laughs> Oh, you big fat ox. I hate you. Dick Powell will return in just a minute. According to a repeated nationwide survey, more doctors smoke camels than any other cigarette. Again, doctors in every branch of medicine, doctors in all parts of the country have been asked, what cigarette they smoke. Again, the brand name most was Camel. Friends, make the sensible cigarette test. Smoke only Camels for 30 days, and you'll see why so many people say, once a Camel smoker, always a Camel smoker. And remember, your best buy is Camels by the carton. How mild, how mild, how mild, how mild, how mild can a cigarette be? Take the camel 30-day test and you'll see. Smoke camels and see. Here's Dick Powell with a special message. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, many men who have served valiantly in our armed forces are hospitalized. And as a tribute, the makers of camels send them gift cigarettes to hospitals in the country and overseas. This week's camels go to Veterans Hospitals, Dallas, Texas, and Phoenix, Arizona, U.S. Naval Hospital, Pensacola, Florida, and to all hospitals operated by the European Command of the U.S. Army. Now, until next week, enjoy camels. I always do. <laughs> Powell can now be seen starring in the RKO film Cry Danger. Tonight's adventure of Richard Diamond was written by Blake Edwards with music by Frank Worth. Our director is Helen Mack. Featured in the cast were Virginia Gregg, Wilms Herbert, and Arthur Q. Bryan. Men, whether you buy the handy pocket tin or the big one pound tin of Prince Albert, you're in for real smoking joy. P.A.'s Choice Tobacco has a rich taste and delightful natural aroma. It's specially treated to ensure against tongue bite. And it's crimp cut for smooth, even, cool smoking. Get Prince Albert, the National Joy Smoke, America's largest selling smoking tobacco. Listen next week for another exciting transcribed adventure of Richard Diamond starring Dick Powell. <laughs>